Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So I'm on about week three of using this Pixel 4a 5G with Calyx OS, and I also have Graphene OS on the Pixel 6 Pro that I'm doing this video with. I'm using these because I'd like to get like, Google a little bit closer out of my life than they were with this Samsung S10e that I have here that uses stock Android, and I will include two links down below that go over all the ways that just Google's frame, play services framework and all this other bullshit is spying on you on a regular basis that I don't want. So this is me on YouTube, and I was going to upload that video that I told you all about, the really good data recovery video, and it wants me to verify that I am me, which fine, is not too unreasonable. So I would imagine that since Google has forced people who are using YouTube Studio to use two-factor authentication starting about eight or nine months ago, that there'd be many different ways to authenticate. Maybe something like the Authy app, SMS text messenger, uh, no. So I have enabled uh, SMS, I have enabled what am I enabled? Yeah, I enabled SMS for this. And for certain services, Google will allow me to use SMS to two-factor authenticate, but here it won't. So it says, check your Google Pixel 4a 5G. Google sent a notification to this. Now, no, it didn't, because again, this thing is not using normal Google Play services. This is using Calyx OS. Calyx OS is using Micro G. It limits the amount of shit that winds up getting shared. So that little thing does not show up on the screen as it usually would, which is fine. Again. I I don't want that shit on my phone. So let's go more ways to verify. Now you may think if we click more ways to verify, since I have enabled two-factor authentication with my phone number, that would be an option. You'd also think that maybe something like Authy would work or any other sort of third-party uh, you know, two-factor authentication. When you click more ways to verify, no, you get two options. Click yes in your phone or tablet, or use your phone or tablet to get a security code even if it's on, offline, which again requires installing Google services on your phone, which as I will include in the link down below, opens them up to spying on you nonstop, which I, I, I don't want to do. So again, if I click tap click yes in your phone or tablet, that's not gonna work. And if I, I can click this, use your phone or tablet to get a security code even if it's offline, but this requires that I go back to my phone that uses standard shit stock Android with all the spying shit on it, and allow it to go online with Google services installed on the device in a privileged manner, which I have an objection to doing because I don't feel like it's just not their fucking business, everything that's on my phone. Now you may say, well, Lewis, you're using YouTube already. So I mean, you're using, you know, they could spy on you through your browser, blah, 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 cookies and everything else. And okay, point taken. However, you have the option to open the browser incognito and you have the option to up solely use YouTube Studio using a VPN so they don't have your IP and using a fresh browser instance each time where it doesn't have access to anything else that you've browsed. So, but if so the equivalent here would be setting up a separate fucking phone that runs stock Android with all the extra shit installed just so that I could do this, just so that they have access to nothing else. So they would not know my, you know, they wouldn't know whatever it is I'm doing in other applications on my phone. They wouldn't know everything you know, that they're spying on that you can see from the link down below. They, that's, this is, this is, this kind of sucks. And I, I just kind of want you to think about this for a moment. You may think, well, you know, you're using a Google service, so you should have to install Google proprietary spyware on your phone. Imagine if Microsoft had a piece of spyware and in order to use something like Microsoft Azure, you had to install their spyware. Or imagine if to order off of Amazon, you were forced to put an echo in your home that was listening all the time, that you didn't have the option to just order normally from a browser. Like, I wanted to think about stuff like that. And then you kind of get an idea of just how insidious this shit is. So this is my old Android phone that I no longer use. This thing is completely wiped. There is nothing installed on it. I literally did nothing on this thing other than log into Google services. I connect every time I have to do this, then the phone goes back off. There are no text messages on there. There are no applications on there. There's no sign-ins to anything else on there. There is nothing to harvest from that device. And when I'm doing that connection, I'm doing it via a VPN so that it's pretty much the minimal amount of shit that they could ever get on me. So whoever at Google designed this this way rather than through a the ability to use some other more standard two-factor authentication that does not require that I install their spyware on my phone, fuck you. Don't be evil. <laughs> My ass. And um, anyway, this phone with graphene on it is actually pretty cool. It really is. I, this this thing's growing on me. I like it. Um, I'm gonna give Nextcloud another chance. I'm setting up uh, another server 
to see if I maybe misconfigured something last time when I said that it was running really, really horribly slow. I would like to give it a second chance since a lot of your comments were suggesting that maybe there was something wrong with my configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and see if anything works differently. But yeah, I'm kind of excited to try all this stuff out, make all this stuff better. Uh, that's it for today. And as always, hope you learned something. See you all in the next video. Bye now. Oh, and yeah, whoever is responsible for this at Google.